Hello everyone! My name is Eugene Sokolow, I'm an application engineer with VPI Photonics. In this video, we will discuss how to predict and simulate the design constraints of a frequency modulated continuous wave LiDAR system. This is the second part of the video, so if you didn't watch the first part, please do this right now, since we are going to use it as a starting point here. The link is in the description below. Some challenges in developing a functional FMCW LiDAR system originate from behavior of a transmitter. Here we are going to discuss one of those challenges – the residual nonlinearity of the laser and how digital predistortion could help to mitigate this effect. To dive deeper into the physics of the transmitter behavior, we need a more accurate laser simulation. In the LiDAR system schematic with which we came up in the first part of the video, we used a simple system-level laser model. It produces a continuous wave optical signal with the specified power, frequency and line width. Further, an ideal frequency modulator varied the frequency of the laser output. In reality, one of the options is to use a directly modulated tunable DBR or DUP lasers instead. We tried to reproduce such a device described in the paper, quoted here. Let's take a closer look how we did it. The proposed transmitter subsystem is a DBR laser. It consists of the active gain section for stimulated emission, front and back mirror regions for mode selection, and a phase tuning section for frequency sweeping. In addition, the laser is integrated with a semiconductor optical amplifier and a spot size converter to maximize the output power. The models for the gain Phase tuning and SOA devices are inherently based on our Photonics TLM model. Please check the documentation for this component for more details. However, in a few words, Photonics TLM efficiently simulates the wide range of semiconductor devices, it allows for studying their spectral properties, carriers and photons dynamics, roles of curve and two photon absorption nonlinearities, bidirectional signal propagation, and carrier distribution within the cavity. The mode selection is implemented by two distributed break reflectors. The front one is a regular uniform grating, while the back mirror is a sampled grating. Please see the reflectivity of the mirrors in the plot. Finally, one could tune the laser line width by sweeping the currents injected into the phase region, as shown in the simulation results. Let's employ this laser design in the FMCW LiDAR system. Like in the original schematic, we apply a triangular driving signal to achieve frequency modulation. The optical signal is split into probe and reference signals. The probe signal reaches the target after propagating through free space. The reflected signal is then received, mixed with the reference signal, and detected with the photodetector. If we check the simulation results, we couldn't distinguish the peak in the detected RF spectrum as easily as we did in the previous simulations. The reason for this is that our tunable laser has an intrinsically non-linear response. We can see this from the fact that the later output frequency versus time is not linear anymore and does not repeat the triangular shape of our driving signal. Such non-linearity will drastically degrade the resolution and SNR of the LiDAR system. The linearity of the sweeping laser is essential, but linearization is needed in order to achieve it. One of the mitigation strategies is digital predistortion waveform shaping. Let us switch on this nonlinear component here. This module will adjust the driving voltage waveform according to the relation we defined in advance based on the laser response. Different adaptive methods allow for doing this. Let us run the simulation again with this predistorted signal. First, we can observe that the driving signal now follows the function we specified, and it is not triangular anymore. In contrast, the laser chirp is closer to the desired linear variation with time, and we can see the effect in the RF spectrum immediately. One could easily distinguish and measure the beating frequency and define the distance to the object with higher fidelity, as we showed in the first part of the video series. Therefore, Pre-distortion is really an efficient way to improve the resolution of the LiDAR system and it could potentially eliminate the need for complex post-processing. Thank you for watching this video. There are surely more things to study. 
To request the evaluation of this example, please follow the link in the description. Thanks again and have a great day!